Welcome to part 2 of the Mongoose Hello World series. In this video we'll be going over Mongoose IDO capabilities and introduce the inheritance model. And here it is. The goal is to have a single point of maintenance for the fundamental data types in your app. To explain how this works, let's check out what we built in part 1. Here is our customer's IDO we created. Remember that an IDO contains properties, and those properties contain attributes. In our case, the property ID contained the three attributes, data type string, length 50, and label string ID, SID. We can group these three attributes into a property class. That way, the next time you create a property, you can select this property class, and the new property inherits the attributes that are assigned in the property class. Inherited attributes can be overridden at various levels of the inheritance model. This allows us to inherit a base class and refine it, keeping our refinements exclusive to a specific level. Let's go into WinStudio and look at an example of inheritance at work. In part one, we created a customer's form, customer's table, and customer's IDO which provided access to the table. On that IDO, we created a property called ID that we assigned a length of 52. Open the customer's form and enter design mode. If this is the first time you've entered design mode, you'll be asked to identify your editing scope because the SA account we're using has what Mongoose calls Site Developer Form Editing Permissions. Select Site Default and click OK. Click OK to the prompt that lets us know that we may want to unload the cache to ensure that we load the correct versions. Our customer's form has an edit box that's bound to the ID property so we would expect to see that the edit box has a length of 50. Select the box and expand the data source section of the properties panel to see that it's bound to object.id. Expand data type and look at the length field. Instead of a 50, it reads zero. Well, scroll down and expand inheritance and click the ellipsis in the view attributes inherited from property. There's our 50 we inherited from the ID property. That zero we saw was the length defined on the component level. If we wanted to, we could define a length of, say, 200 here, and it would override the length of 50 assigned on the property level without changing the property definition. Let's create a new property class we can use as a foundation to build other property classes on. Open the IDO property classes form by going to Form, Open. I'll type IDO and then arrow down to it. The best practice is to use property classes to the greatest extent possible, and that involves some planning of your data model. But because property classes are metadata, it's simple to adjust them as you develop. Execute filter in place by using the shortcut F4, and press Ctrl N to create a new property class. Name it UM, short for unit of measure, base, data type string, length 10, and then drop the column data type list. By default, Mongoose will only query the first 200 items for lists based on IDO-based queries. Rather than scroll through this list and look for the data type we want, which is nvercar, we should use in-place filtering. Type nver and the wildcard character, which is asterisk, and drop the list. By typing this, we're only querying column data types that start with nver. We can do this even quicker by typing nver and press F2. F2 implies the asterisk and drops the list in one keystroke. Select nver car and enter the label string ID SUM and save. For efficiency, Mongoose has caching of metadata at both the app server and the client. To be sure our new property class shows is available, select Form, Definition, Unload Global Form Objects, or use the shortcut Control u The next thing we should do is build the pieces to enable us to designate a unit of measure for an item in our app. For example, we want to have the option to say these eggs are X dollars a dozen, or that these bikes are X dollars each. Enter Design Mode and go to Form, Definition, New Data Maintenance. Name our form, table, and IDO, UMS, 
and we want to place the UM's IDO into our Hello World IDO project. Make the form type multi view and the device type default. Now let's enter our attributes in the grid below. Name, UM, and scroll to the right. Click on the property classes column and we'll be asked if we want to create the string, SUM, and we do so click yes, and then click OK to accept the default string value of UM. Now in the property classes dropdown, select the UM base property class by typing UM and selecting it from the list. This means that the property UM will inherit the attributes that we specified in the UM base property class, which were data type string, length 10, and column data type, and vercar. We also want to make this attribute the primary key and required. Notice that our values from the UM base property class are now shown. We want to add one more attribute, so click the Add Row button and name it Description. And we can tab through these columns, so I'll press Tab and select Data Type String and set the property length to 50. Click Next and Finish. After a few seconds, we'll get the prompt urging us to be careful when deleting a column or a table. Click OK and we can close the new data maintenance wizard. Now we should enter some units of measure we can use for our items. Enter EA, short for each, and press Ctrl N to create a new row, DZ for dozen, and press Ctrl S to save. We're now going to make another property class which will be used by IDOs that refer to the unit of measure data in what is called a foreign key relationship in database terminology. Select the IDO property classes form. Note that you can have multiple forms open, with some in run mode and others in design mode. If you noticed, we were in run mode on the UM's form, and when we selected the IDO property classes form, we entered design mode. Remember that to add new data to a form, we need to be in run mode. So to create a new property class, we need to be in run mode. Press Ctrl N to create a new property class named UM. In the base class dropdown, type UM and press F2 to select the UM base property class and save. On this UM property class we just created, we're inheriting attributes from UM base, which are data type string, length 10, and column data type and vercar. And we're going to be adding information that will allow Mongoose to provide default lists and validation. In the domain IDO field, type UM and press F2 to select the UM's IDO and in Domain Property, select the UM property. In Additional List Properties, select Description by typing DES and pressing F2. Notice the asterisk next to these domain fields. This indicates that we're overriding inherited attributes. Remember to press Ctrl S to save. We need to create the table, IDO, and form to hold our items in our store. But first, let's create an item-based property class and a cost property class so we can specify a cost for each of our items in the form of dollars and cents. Press Ctrl N to create a property class named item base, data type string, length 20, column data type we want nver car, so type in nver and press F2, label string ID s item, and save. Press Ctrl N to create another property class named cost. Data type decimal so we can have a whole number and a decimal for our item cost. Length 18 and decimal precision 2 will create two decimal places for our cents. Default value 0 and column data type type in DEC and then press F2 to select a decimal. Label string ID S cost and let's justify this one right. Now we can save and close the IDO property classes form. Press Ctrl U to unload the cache, enter design mode, and open the new data maintenance wizard. Now it's time to create the table, IDO, and form to hold our items. The name is items, and place the items IDO into the Hello World IDO project. Form type again is multi-view, 
and the device type is default. We have four attributes for items, so press the add row button three times, and here are the attributes. The first one is named item. Scroll to the right and in the property class column, select item base. And yes, we want to create the string s item and press OK to accept the string value item. This will allow us to inherit the attributes we specified in the item base property class, which were data type string, length 20, and label string ID s item. Check the primary key and required boxes. Next attribute is description, string, length 150, and since the label string ID s description is in the database, it's already there for us. The next one is cost. Click yes to create the s cost string and click OK to accept the default value. Select the cost property class to inherit the data type decimal, length 18, and decimal precision too. The last one is UM, and select the property class UM which will allow us to inherit data type string, length 10, and the domain information that we specified for the UM property class. Click Next, and Finish. Click OK to the prompt, and we can close the new data maintenance wizard. When the items form opens, notice that Mongoose has created a combo box component bound to the UM property rather than an edit component. This is because we're inheriting domain information which Mongoose uses to provide a list source and validations. Let's test out the validations on this dropdown. Drop the list and we see the unit of measure data we entered. Try typing something like bushel and saving. Because it's not one of the units of measure, dozen or each we created, it's telling us that bushel is not a valid UM or unit of measure. List sources and validations are more examples of runtime inheritance at work. We could go all the way back to the property class level and add additional units of measure or modify our existing two, and the form would immediately reflect those changes. Notice that the component bound to the cost property is right justified and has a value of 0.00. .00. This is because we inherited the right justify attribute from the cost property class, and also because a new occurred when we opened the form, what Mongoose calls an auto insert. The inherited default value of zero was applied to the components bound to the cost property, which has a decimal precision of two, which is why we see the default value of zero correctly displayed as 0.00. .00. So what did we just build? Let's take a quick look. We began by creating the property class UM base, to which we assigned the label string ID SUM. Then we created another property class named UM which was derived from UM base, which means it inherited the label string ID SUM. On this level, we added the domain information, which allowed us to have the validation of the units of measure dropdown that contained each and dozen. Next, we created the property UM, which was derived from UM base, meaning that again, the label string ID SUM was inherited. When the form UMs was created during the new data maintenance wizard, an edit component was bound to the UM property which contained the label string ID SUM. We finished up by using the new data maintenance wizard to create our items form, table, and IDO. Before we finish up, let's create a few items for our store. My first item will be a bike, description red road bike, with a cost of $100 each. Press Control N, the second item is a barbell, description 45 pounds, with a cost of $25 each. Press Control N. The third item is a dozen eggs, so I'll name it eggs. The description will do brown, with a cost of $3.29 a dozen. Press Control N, the last item is a guitar. Description is acoustic with a cost of $399.99. ,99. 
each. When you're done entering your items, remember to save. In part three, we'll be exploring querying and take our first look at the event system. For more tutorials and documentation, visit the Mongoose portal or send us an email at mongoose at infor.com.